Hello and welcome to Spearfish United Methodist Church's first weekend of Advent uh, online worship. We are so happy to have you here and I would like to invite you to join our Facebook page so you can follow along with us and our Facebook community group uh, to be more in fellowship among each other, even virtually. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more from us. On Thursday, December 1st at 7 p.m., we are going to live stream our Tizay service. I hope you can join us for that. It'll be a quiet time of reflection and uh, singing and music, and it should help you calm your nerves and give you a lot of peace and joy. Also, if you are in the Spearfish area next Sunday, the 4th, uh, we, would l we are going to be caroling at Edgewood Vista Retirement Home. We will meet there at 4 p.m. Today, our speaker is a guest, Gail Arnold, and he is going to be talking to us about the end of the world as we know it. So we're happy to have you join us, and let's worship. This is the first Sunday of Advent from Isaiah 2. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We are glad, whether we drove in or climbed up, whether we logged on or tuned in. We are glad to be here in this community with this family. It is a place of joyful hope, a radical welcome. It is a place where together we can wait in wondrous anticipation of the kingdom to come. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us God's ways, and that we may walk in God's paths. We light this candle as a sign of our hope, our joyous hope that we can be restored, our faith restored, our strength restored, our confidence restored, our joy restored as we watch and wait with all God's people for the promise to be fulfilled. Let us go to our God in prayer, shall we? Almighty and ever-loving God, we do gather before you this evening. As we look at this way of moving into a new season, a new part of the year that we call Advent, looking at the time when we await your coming and look forward to your coming. So Lord, as we gather in this season, we also recognize again the struggles we go through as well as the joys that we share as we recognize as we have this last week to give you thanks for the bounty of blessings that you have poured out upon us. And so Lord, we gather tonight, yes, to praise you, to give you thanks, and as well to seek again your inspiration and your guidance that we might truly be your people as we move in this Advent season. And so hear us, O Lord, as we do come to you, offering to you again our prayers of praise and thanksgiving, for we offer them to you in the name of Jesus the Christ, the one who is our Lord and our Savior. And hear us as well as we join together and share in that prayer that he taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture comes from Mark 13. As he was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings, replied Jesus? Not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places, and famine. These are the beginning of birth pains. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Yes, we are again at the beginning again of the season we call Advent. The time, like I said, when we look forward to the coming of Christ, and usually we focus on our preparations again for the birth of Christ. And we recognize, though, that there is a second aspect of our advent, of our awaiting. And that's why I'm glad, again, that Pastor John has picked this book, talking again about the advent that we find in the Gospel of Mark. And you're probably, if you're familiar with the Gospel of Mark, you say, "But, but there's no birth story here. How can this be a message of advent, of preparation and anticipation? Well, as we hear again from, again, the 13th chapter here of the Gospel of Mark, we hear again these words of Jesus talking again about what we call the end times. A time again that we find again Jesus coming into the world to restore the world to the way God wants it to be to change things and make them right. 
And we run this, yeah, for some reason, folks in the seminaries and things, they always like to come up with big fancy names for this, various aspects within our faith. And this type of writing of Jesus talking in about the coming of the end, we call that apocalyptic scripture. The book of end times. And we find one of the greatest apocalyptic writings, of course, is the book of Revelation. Talking about, again, the various things that will happen before and leading up to and immediately after, again, Jesus' return. But it gets very interesting. We find, again, an apocalyptic writing is a type where people are writing to people who are hurting. They're struggling. Their faith is being challenged. They're having to put up with difficult things to try to save and protect their faith. And its apocalyptic writing assures them that no matter what they're going through, no all the pain and the struggles and the suffering and the persecution, that God is ultimately victorious. God will save us. And we find again, following again a few years, again, time when the, the Gospel of Mark is being written, about 35 years after the life, death, and ministry, and resurrection of Christ, the people are being suffering. They're still under Roman oppression, and they've had enough. At least some of the Israelites have said they've had enough, and they want to rise up in revolution, have an insurrection against the Roman powers, and restore Israel as a nation of God. In the same way that the Maccabean revolt helped again happen back again in the time about 50 years before Jesus was born. The people then were suffering under Greek oppression. And that Maccabean revolt came up and they were victorious. They threw off that collar of oppression and established Israel as a new nation. And so the Jews of that day with Roman oppression said, we've done it before, we can do it again. But as the insurrection began, we found out it turned in more, almost more of a civil war than a rise up against the Roman powers. Because while there were a good portion of the Israelites who wanted to fight and wanted to throw off Roman oppression, there were some who said, but Rome is too strong, it's too powerful. We'll never be able to defeat them. And so they didn't take part in the insurrection. And of course there were others, some of those within the upper classes, within the political and religious leaders who didn't want to see an insurrection rise up because they were getting along all right. They were supporting Rome and benefiting from it themselves. And so because of their positions and their power and their influence, they didn't want an insurrection. But it came. And those again who said Rome was too strong were right. The Romans put down the insurrection, destroyed the temple and Jerusalem, just like Jesus had predicted. And so they wanted to hear these words. And if you read again more within that 13th chapter of Mark, you'll find again more things as Jesus is describing what will happen and what will take place. But that yes, God will provide victory as he says, within the, com the coming of the Son of Man will restore things to rightness in the, the right place. And so as we look again, our, let's say our season of Advent, focusing on that aspect of that awaiting, that anticipation of the coming, we see that there are other things that are going on. And there's always speculation as to 
when this is going to happen. But Jesus said, only God knows. Not even the Son knows when that date will come. And so we as human beings, we like to look around and see what's going on. And when we see bad things taking place, we think maybe, maybe this is the beginning of the end. I know when 9-11 happened and 3,000 people killed in the falling of the temple, the towers there in New York, there were folks who were saying, maybe now God will come to save us. Or of course, just recently with the COVID pandemic and over a million people dying and still more dying here in the United States People are saying, is this the time? Get ready. See, those are the things of Jesus' words of caution. He said you need to stay alert and stay awake because we don't know what time it will come. But he also said as an example, it was like a parable. He says, when the, when the master of the house leaves and puts all of his servants to do the jobs that they were assigned to, Make sure you stay busy doing your work. And so we look at that aspect of our lives, what things has God set before us? What is our task? What is our job? What are we supposed to be doing? And sometimes we look at those words, those apocalyptic words, and we wonder, when is the end coming? And so we as human beings, we tend to focus on those aspects within that apocalyptic scripture about the end times, about the suffering and the persecutions, the things that are going to take place. And we expect that and we anticipate that being the signs of the end times. But you know, I think God has a way of doing things differently than what we expect. In Jesus' ministry and in a time again when the people still were under Roman oppression and they were looking for salvation. They were looking for a Messiah who would rise up in revolution against Rome and defeat Rome. They were looking for that military leader. But what did God provide? A baby born in Bethlehem who would grow up and beginning his ministry at his baptism and preach and talk about love, forgiveness, peace, and harmony. And he healed the sick, he raised the dead and gave his life on a cross as a common criminal to show that God had a different way of doing things rather than what was humanly expected. And I'm wondering if isn't that same thing maybe for us today? Yeah, we hear some of those words of this in that apocalyptic writing about all the things that will take place. And I'm wondering if maybe God isn't already at work bringing about the change that we're looking for. Because we know the world definitely needs change, right? Hate must end. Cruelty must end. Suffering must end. And so we're waiting again for that transformation that'll change things if we are going to be about our work that God has given to us. And that's one of the things I love about our United Methodist mission statement. Who are we about? What are we supposed to be doing? Making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. I know a lot of people 
focus on that first part, making disciples of Jesus Christ. But then as disciples of Jesus Christ, what are we supposed to do? Sometimes people, I think people like to think of God as being that big God, and we want God to do big things. We're waiting for God to bring about again that transformation of the world, to bring Christ back at second time and establish God's kingdom here on earth, which is what we pray for in our Lord's Prayer. But I think when we look at those things, again, just like Jesus came that first time as a baby, how is Jesus coming the second time? Hopefully with us, because like I said, you know, we expect God to do big things. And I'm thinking, you know, I think God has had a lot of opportunity to change the world. But for some reason, God hasn't. And I'm wondering if maybe it's because God is waiting for us to bring about that change to work again within our human strengths and with the gifts that God has given to us, to continue to share that message again of peace and love, grace and forgiveness, so that we can again be the change that we look for. And that's what we're doing in this, again, this Advent season, preparing ourselves to be the people God wants us to be, to change the world, beginning with one act of kindness where we are right now. We don't have to bring that whole transformation ourselves. We just need to do some of those little steps to share that gift of God's love where we are right now and make that change be the beginning of the coming of the kingdom of God. Amen.
Humanitarian relief and recovery is at the core of Global Ministries' work. The United Methodist Committee on Relief was founded more than 80 years ago in response to the devastation caused by the Second World War. Today, our efforts to alleviate human suffering include disaster response, support of refugees and migrants, and efforts to increase environmental sustainability and decrease food insecurity. This work is collaborative work involving the church, partners, volunteers, caseworkers, and counselors ready to serve all in need, regardless of nationality or race, faith or status. Representing the Finance Committee and also the Church Council. We want to thank you for pledging and giving faithfully to Christ's work at Spearfish United Methodist Church. We are a generous church in many ways. Currently, the general fund is in the red about $30,000. This fund supports church staff and facilities primarily. The projected 2023 general fund budget will be a deficit budget due to increased insurance and utility costs, plus a pay raise for the staff. We do trust God to provide. We want you to know that the general fund needs your help to finish 2022 strong. And please pray about your ongoing support for the 2023 budget as well. Personally, I feel that all I have is a gift from God. I choose to tithe back to God. Praise God that we are blessed in order to bless others. Thank you on behalf of the Stewardship and Finance Committee and the Church Council. Share the message we have heard and be 
a light unto the world as we go. As we go, may your spirit go before us. As we go, may we follow where you lead. May we live what we have learned, share the blessings we have heard, and be a light unto the So let us go in the power and the strength and the love of God, our creator, Jesus Christ, our redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our sustainer, to be God's people and to begin to change the world. Amen.